Hey Rans fans, welcome to my horizontal stabilizer build on my Rans S21. I know it's been a while since I've uh, put out my last video, but I want to try to catch up on some of the footage I have. Currently it's uh, October 2020. This uh, footage is mostly from back in February of 2020, so I'm a little behind. So I'm going to try to catch up, bring us uh, up to speed where I'm at currently in the build. So right here I have my... Uh, horizontal stabilizer frame click together and I'm putting the skins on um, just the normal uh, make sure your ribs are are properly uh, fluted so they're straight and uh, you know your spars and stuff are in the right position uh, deeper the edges a lot of times when uh, they go through the CNC machine there's some edges and stuff like that so all that stuff I, I skipped over I'm going right into the um, frame build here uh, one thing I did do that the plans um, didn't mention was I clicoed the frame together, put the skin on, and I match drilled the spars because you have a doubler that has a double flange with the elevator spars, or excuse me, the horizontal stabilizer spars, and so you'll get some burrs in there. So I'm glad I did that. And the plans say rivet and then drill, and then it's hard to get those burrs between those two pieces of metal. So uh, enjoy the video. Okay, I'm about to click on the skin for the horizontal stabilizer. I've not riveted the ribs or the doublers to the spars. The concern was the spar doubler flange. If I riveted it, I couldn't deburr everything. There's 332nd pilot holes on one side. The plans instructions, or the text instructions say to put the front and rear spar holes on the same side. Then I started to uh, open the holes up to number 30 with a drill bit, but um, I decided to go ahead and put the skins on. I've already test fitted one skin, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the skins on and level everything and match drill, and then flip it over. The opposite side of the spars have no pilot holes on the flange. So I'm going to have to match drill to the skin. It's kind of ambiguous in the instructions. It says to rivet the spars and ribs and the frame before placing the skin on. It doesn't really specify when to match drill for these spars. I'm concerned about the burrs that would get between the doubler and the spars on the flange part where the skin rivets to. So I've asked Rand's clan, somebody answered up that they've uh, clecoed, drilled, and then deburred. I've seen a YouTube video of a RANS build for the horizontal stabilizer that riveted first and then match drilled the skins. I'm going to go ahead and take the safe route. It's pretty level, pretty uh, lines up really well with the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, keep it clay code, match drill the skins, and then take it all apart and deburr properly so I don't have, ever have a, a question as whether I would get stress cracks from not deburring those two parts that fit together. Stars. At this point I've already matched drill the skins to the flanges of the spar and I'm about to rivet the doubler to the spar. You gotta make sure you uh, leave the open the holes for the ribs here, don't rivet those until you got the ribs in place. And then I'll have to uh, drill this inner nose rib where the skin ends. That's the center rib, and then that's the other one. I have it marked. So when I get that rib on there, I'll transfer drill it. And then the rear spar, you can tell there's larger holes for the hinges. I'm going to 
go ahead and rivet the hinges on after I rivet the doubler. Turn it over, you see how the doubler's on the inside here. The flange area where I match drilled and deburred already with the skin. So this is an inside tip rib. It lies against the fuselage and you have to match drill one of the holes to the spar. The best way to line this nose rib up is have the skin on so you know where to place this rib because sometimes you might get one or two holes off if you're not careful. So before drilling, make sure you test fit with the skin drill bit to uh, draw off the hinge a little bit for the bushing on the elevator and horizontal stabilizer. Currently I'm working on the horizontal stabilizer rear spar. So this is also applicable to the vertical stabilizer and rudder. These are the new updated hinges and I did put some self-etching primer on them. So they need to be uh, drilled out just slightly um, to get the bushings to fit in correctly. I'm using a 5 16 drill bit to accomplish that. And then real quickly, one thing I would suggest is get a chucking reamer and a uh, number 30. And what this does is basically like a, uh, a file in a way it reams out the hole perfectly round and it's um, when you're going along and placing your rivets in if you got one that doesn't quite fit and you can't get the hole to line up um, and it's off by a millimeter or something like that you can use this reamer and it will uh, round out the hole so your rivet will fit in it whereas if you use a drill bit it could leave burrs or uh, an oblong hole but I, I find that if I have a hole that's slightly out of alignment that I can't get to uh, back into alignment with a um, punch or something like that, I'll just use the this reamer and it'll uh, basically file the hole to a round edge and leaves minimal burrs so you don't have to disassemble the part and uh, re deburr that part. So just an idea of uh, if any of you use a reamer. Okay, here's the horizontal stabilizer. I have all the rivets placed, ready to pull them. Leveled. I got some sandbags on there. I don't really think they're necessary, but they're kind of just holding it down on the supports. So when you're doing the horizontal stabilizer rivets, there's three sizes. You got your 41s, 42s, and 43s. So the 41s are used on the rib to skin, like here on this end rib, and all throughout the ribs, main ribs and nose ribs. You're using the 42s out of the outer ends of the spar, where it's just the spar and no doubler. So all these are 42s. And look on the drawing manual. The parts manual 
and you'll see there's a transition here where there's a doubler on these spars and then you have to use 43s all throughout here the inspection plate rings on there and then for the fairings you got to dimple the skin and counter sink the front spar here both bottom and top and then dimple the nose ribs I riveted these nose ribs to the frame before I dimpled it was kind of difficult with my squeezer so mark these ribs before you rivet them onto the frame as the inboard ribs and you can nose ribs dimple those before you rivet them to the frame and then you got to dimple these two holes here the spar is countersunk and that's the first hole for the rib to the skin in the center rib that's dimpled and actually you got the overlap of the skin here and then as you go out the spars have 43s the ribs have 41s and then past the doubler ends here and then all these are 42s and then I went ahead riveted on the hinges to the spar I did that before uh, riveting the frame together so it's a little bit easier to maneuver and manipulate the larger these are stainless steel rivets you gotta really hold on to the parts when you're squeezing those because it uh, takes a little bit of force so I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling all these rivets and uh, incidentally I did the top first to make sure the tops align because this is the part you're going to see and this was also the match the 332nd holes in the spar they weren't 1 8 inch you had to drill them out to 1 8 but all these holes were 330 seconds pre-drilled so I did those on the top because those are the holes that were correctly spaced at um, Rand's factory and then the undrilled part is on the bottom so if there's any issue uh, with appearance it's going to be on the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer where you won't be able to see it as much. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I just uh, went ahead and finished riveting. I had to cut off the bend tabs and follow them even with the sides of the horizontal stabilizer. It was actually uh, one of the easier parts to build. It, there was a little bit more part count than the vertical stabilizer, but like I've said before, this one was real straightforward. Everything lined up. I think the biggest concern I had was riveting the frame before drilling the skin and not being able to deburr the flanges. So I just click it together, match drilled, and then deburred. So that took a little bit extra time, but it was no big deal. So please uh, subscribe, hit the bell to be reminded when new videos come out, and I'll see you on the next uh, build video. Thank you.